Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video. We've got a, a rebuild, a refresh of an older machine. This is a NetVista product from IBM, as you can see from the logo. So this would be the kind of the last period of time when IBM was still making PCs before they sold to Lenovo. So uh, short, shortly before the sale, the NetVista product line was discontinued and a new product line called Think Center came out. And that's the one that transitioned over to, to Lenovo along with the ThinkPad laptop product line. So this is kind of like the end of the, the, the line for the IBM design PCs. Uh, they went from having the PC series for business and the Aptiva product line for home use and they kind of wanted to converge them together to have one product line that would be for business and home and that's what NetVista was designed for. So this is a NetVista M42. This is a machine type uh, 8307 machine. It's a socket 478 Pentium 4 and yeah, uh, we got this one uh, in on a donation. Uh, it was in kind of rough shape, but we fixed it up. I also have paired with my, my IBM keyboard that I've had for, gosh, 15 years, maybe more. And uh, I'm pairing it up with this one to kind of complete the set because I've literally had that since uh, 2000, I want to say 2005, 2006. I've had this. I've had this. Uh, this keyboard uh, in and around the house, uh, being used by all uh, all members of the family at one point in time. Use this. Use this. Uh, use this keyboard, which is which is it needed. It needed a cleaning. This thing was, this thing was in nasty shape. You know, you got those keyboards where you know in in between and underneath the keys, you can just see. You can see the things that are underneath it. Yeah, this was one of those. It had hair from at least two dogs and probably food, it was just nasty. So we had taken that apart and washed the whole thing, uh, you know, not the circuitry, but washed all the keys and the keypad under, underneath and everything out um, to make it nice and fresh. And it's beautiful now. Uh, and yeah, lovely keyboard. So we're gonna get this booted up and check it out, right? Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, here we go to boot. Right, looks like everything is starting up properly so far. So this system was uh, a pretty interesting setup here uh, to get uh, to get going. Um, first of all, we had uh, so the hard drive uh, would be the first thing to talk about on this one. Uh, it came with the uh, what I assume is still the original hard drive. So it came with this this Western Digital. Uh, 40 gig hard drive, which we still have here, uh, that had the original IBM image on it. In fact, the person that had donated it had not um, had not uh, reloaded it, so they hadn't wiped the image or anything. Uh, but the system did have some smart errors, uh, which meant that uh, I didn't want to, you know, continue with that. I don't like using drives when they've started to get those errors. I'd rather replace it with one, even if it's a used drive that's, you know, in better condition. So I grabbed a 120 gig hard drive that I had, IDE still, and I wanted to try and clone it. And I ran into, I had no end of challenges of trying to clone it. And the reason why was because the the reason I wanted to clone it was because this original IBM image had the service partition attached to it and the service partition allows you to completely restore the factory default install of in this case Windows XP with all the IBM stuff right like this cool uh, time zone background image and all the sound effects and all the original applications uh, that's what I wanted to make sure we retained uh, so I had some challenges trying to get it cloned and and the th the big challenge with trying to clone it was going from a 40 gig hard drive to a 120 gig hard drive, it would clone the drive, but it would clone it in the exact setup at the beginning of the 120 gig disc, which meant I had the, you know, 30 some odd gig partition where Windows was, and then the, you know, eight gig partition for the factory reset, and then all this empty space at the end. 
So I'll show you what I mean. We'll go into system management, we'll go to the disk management, and I will show you what I'm talking about. So you'll see here we've got the IBM preload, right? This 29.81 NTFS partition, that's the clone of the original hard drive. And then the IBM service partition, which is this 7.45 gig clone of the original uh, hard drive. And then here we've got this 77.22 gig. I've named it IBM underscore data, kind of keep it preload, service, data. And I created this partition with the leftover space. I had tried a number of times to move this partition to the end of the drive so I could have one whole partition. That didn't work. I tried only copying this partition onto the drive, maybe at the beginning and try to reload it. No, nothing I did worked. Somehow the way it's set up just wouldn't go. I also tried uh, running the rescue and recovery application to try and like create a backup clone that I could restore on another drive. Just so many challenges with it. And I think it's just, it's part of you know why that type of software really isn't in use today. There's better software out there today that does a better job of cloning and backing up system images and drives and everything, even for personal use. Uh, that this type of stuff that IBM was doing, while great for the time, really doesn't hold hold true. So, anyways, this works how it is. We've got a an OS load. We've got our backup partition to be able to restore the system whenever we need to. And then we've got a very large data drive to be able to install data and applications. And if we ever did have to restore the system, that E drive stays exactly where it is. So it ends up being okay. So speaking of uh, stuff that we loaded on here, uh, as I mentioned, it had the original image on here. And that would be a Service Pack 1 install of Windows XP Professional. I did do the Service Pack 3 and unofficial Service Pack 4 updates. So we've got that uh, security patches, etc., available up until 2014. Additional software we did install on here would be Image Burn uh, because I did put a Sony multi burner in here so we could do some backups. I installed Avast 18.8. Uh, Again, this is the like the last version of Avast that will still run on a Windows XP system. Um, Clam Antivirus is a good alternative as well, but I like I like using Avast here. It's you know. It's not bloatware yet, I think, <laughs> where I'm coming from. Uh, Firefox 52, which allows us to get internet access. If you feel comfortable going on the internet with a Windows XP based machine, do not put any of your personal data <laughs> on a machine that you're running Windows XP on and going on the internet. It's bad news. Uh, then we got, I put a couple games on here as well. Uh, so Need for Speed, uh, Unreal Tournament, Halo, and Doom 3. These are all demo versions, just to try things out uh, in terms of performance. It's not great performance. You gotta run at 640 by 480 and you're not getting a lot of FPS on it. But it's still, you know, it works. Uh, and then we installed LibreOffice and VLC as well. So pretty good productivity machine. Uh, I did also install a Wi-Fi card on here. Uh, it is a 2.4 gigahertz only, and it won't do WPA2, so you're somewhat hamstrung if you want to be able to connect to Wi-Fi on your home network that you're risking a less secure environment maybe connecting to a guest network or you know occasionally connecting to a hotspot or something um, when you want to connect by Wi-Fi but not you know not staying connected all the time so that's it for uh, the install stuff uh, let's open the machine up and just take a look at some of the parts that we built out for this machine all right, so here we are doing the teardown thing here. So we got the case here, front handle, good grip on here. I mentioned I it, this had a regular CD-ROM drive in it, I believe. So I had this Sony multi burner, which I thought that you know the Sony brand paired up nicely with the IBM brand uh, for this to be able to connect. Floppy disk drive, which is installed. I do have the IBM Recovery Partition Repair Disk. Uh, that I made for this one as well. Just in case uh, there's ever any issues with accessing the repair partition, this will allow you to, to uh, restore any you know connections for that. So that's going on there. Front end of the system, we've got a pair of USB ports and our power plug. And then we've got our door handle on the side. I will push the panel here. And that will allow us to snap things off. Door disappears. 
and we can take a look at the inner sides of the system. So pretty compact, pretty tight design in here. We've got our power supply on this door, uh, on this door hinge, right? And then underneath we expose the system board. Pentium 4 processor, uh, 2.4 gigahertz Pentium 4. Uh, we've got a pair of DDR DIMMs here, a total of one gig of memory, two 512s. Uh, for a video card, there is onboard video, but it's crap. So I put this uh, Radeon 9250. Um, I had originally put a 9600 XT in here, but it was having problems with the system where every time the system would boot from like a cold boot, it wouldn't recognize the card. And then if you shut the machine down and restarted it, it would recognize the card. And I was like, that's not appropriate. And the 9250 and also a 9200 both work without any issues. Now, obviously they're low-end cards. So I mentioned the gaming benchmark stuff uh, really wasn't that good, right? We're 640 by 480, 20, maybe 30 frames per second on those games that I tried out. Um, the 9600 would have been better quality, um, but you know, that's the sacrifice we had to make. <laughs> uh, we've got the hard drive here. Um, so nice, cool bay. I'll show you something cool about this drive. Originally had the 40 gig, this 40 gig drive, and I replaced it with this Maxdoor 120. And then up in the top corner here, you can kind of see that's an integrated speaker. So it does have a speaker like for playing games and stuff right built into it. Uh, very common on business machines where they put the speaker built in. It's not super loud, but for a standalone environment, maybe where you just have this system with the keyboard and mouse and a single monitor kind of tucked away somewhere and you don't have to worry about the speakers being plugged into something as well. It's one less component to have to worry about, you know, when you have a, a machine like this in your collection. All right, moving around to the back of the machine, we'll take a look at the port selection. You've got your power port. I mentioned we've had this Wi-Fi card installed here if you needed it. There's the connections for your video card, VGA and S-Video and uh, composite video out. We've got our Ethernet, integrated stereo audio, a couple more USB ports, uh, VGA for the onboard, uh, PS2 connectors, if you still use those. And then of course, parallel and serial connections, why not? And then we've got a, a system fan here. Um, one thing that's cool about this system as well is it does have managed system fans. So both the, P P, um, both the CPU fan and the system fan will turn on only when the system gets warm enough. The P uh, PSU fan um, is uh, very quiet as well. So uh, that's nice in terms of having that. One other thing I want to show off here is, see this button here? If I push this button in, it'll knock the front panel off, and I want to show you something cool about that. So, we push that button. Oh, front panel came off, and now I have easy access to be able to get into my front environment, right? So my, my optical drive, my floppy drive if I need to replace it, and then this little dropout where I can remove my hard drive so this is, you know, part of that, you know, being a business machine, being able to quickly service stuff. So the fact that I could quickly replace a hard drive that was failed when I'm on the bench, and this is something that could be done without even having to open up the side of the system, because this front panel pops off just by snapping that back button, swap out my hard drive that I've pre-imaged on the bench, and my... Uh, my user's machine is back in business. Yeah, so that's the whole machine. Hope you enjoyed the video showing it off and enjoy all the videos that I'm in here cataloging the systems that come across my, my workbench here. Uh, as always, I hope you are staying safe and healthy in these strange and uncertain times, hopefully getting a little more certain uh, <laughs> uh, every every day and a little more, a little more safe every day. And uh, anyways, we will catch you in the next one.